Hello, my name is Mark Tereski, and um, on January 10th, 2018, um, I uh, did a 100 plus mile ski, cross country ski, uh, skate ski, on the uh, Menhau Trail system. My goal was to, number one, be able to go over 100 miles, uh, which I did achieve that. And the other one was to try and um, try and navigate the complete perimeter of the trail system. And unfortunately, um, because of time constraints and, um, and other things, uh, nutrition, those sorts of things, um, I had to cut it a little bit short. I, it, would have, it would have come out about 110, maybe 115 miles. Um, the areas that, uh, that I did cut out were like the castle uh, loop, um, the aqua loop, and then I didn't uh, didn't do the um, bitter brush area, which I was hoping to get. Um, by the way, I did this same or a similar ski uh, about three years ago. Um, actually, almost three years to the date. It was January seventh, two thousand fifteen. And uh, the first thing I want to do in this video is kind of go over uh, the route that I took. Uh, and the spots they stopped. Um, a big thanks to um, the Brown, the Brown Farm. They let me um, put some stash some food at their house. Um, actually, it's a it's a warming hut. It's a, a part of part of the trail system, but uh, they it's theirs and they volunteer the uh, space uh, for the trail system, which is wonderful. Um, and also uh, Wolf Ridge, um, I did stop there, um, and that was nice to have a. A warm spot to stop and nourish myself and continue on. Okay, without any further ado, I'll go ahead and uh, go over the uh, the route that I took. Um, we have a place uh, right here at the intersection, or real close to the intersection of Sandy Butte, Sandy Butte Trail, and um, uh, the Community Trail, about where the U is here. Uh, and fittingly enough, I'm using my pole that I uh, actually used. Uh, as my pointer, but uh, so we finished. I started here and uh, went on the Sandy Butte Trail uh, by Jack's cabin or Jack's hut, excuse me, and then went across uh, 20 uh, on an early winter's trail and then hooked up with Jack's here and about here. Uh, yeah, about here somewhere I ran in, actually ran into uh, the groomer and I had to get by him. Thank God he pulled off to do something else. Uh, that could have been a problem for me. Uh, <clears throat> so then I continued on Jack's trail. Uh, did upper Jack's. And then got uh, from here I took the upper river run. Here. And then... Um, I crossed over uh, at uh, the Brush School Trailhead to base camp. Long base camp. Um, I was originally going to do uh, the goat wall loop, but I had to take a bathroom break, so I came down under here. Uh, uh, came down on in run. Took my bathroom break and then came back up to Flag Mountain Loop. Um, and by, uh, by, I did the biathlon little loop. My son um, is on the biathlon team, so I had to do that for him. Uh, so continued on the Flag Mountain Loop, and then uh, did the Goat Creek, uh, and then uh, all the way to Lower Fawn. Um, this is kind of where it became a little bit uh, challenging uh, because they hadn't groomed and there was about three inches of snow um, from so from here all the way to the other side of Sick Joke Hill um, was not groomed again and that's probably the one of the hardest areas but it, so I continued on that uh, all the way up the uh, lower fawn and then upper fawn and then down uh, Sick Joke Hill, uh, 
and originally my plan was to try and get the Cla uh, Castle Creek Loop, but because I had spent so much time getting up the hill, I decided just to just to go on the Rendezvous Basin. Uh, so I continued on the Rendezvous Basin uh, all the way until we got to uh, the Cedar Creek. Oh, I didn't. Oh, excuse me, Cow Creek here, and then got this. Uh, to Cedar, the Cedar Creek Loop, and then continued on the Cedar Creek Loop. I uh, did not go up to Heifer Hut, but went turned here at the Cedar Creek Loop, and then came down um, Upper Cougar Bait. And then I did not go all the way to the trailhead, but I did turn here at the Little, Little Cub Creek. Um, that was nicely groomed. By the way, everything else was really nicely groomed that day. Um, except for that one and one other one I'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, Little Cub Creek, uh, which is always challenging just in the sense that it's a black diamond, but uh, nice to have it groomed. Uh, and then from there I did um, Cougar Mountain. I uh, went by Gardner Hut, which was really a, a beautiful site, beautiful vista there. Uh, and then got back on to uh, got back on to the rendezvous, uh, rendezvous basin. Didn't do the Grizzly Mountain Loop either, but uh, continued on, on rendezvous basin, lower rendezvous basin, and then went up Sick Joke. This is from, again, this is where it wasn't groomed, uh, and that was extremely challenging. Um, took a lot of effort out of my system, but managed to do that. Uh, it was kind of nice to get the, the downhill again though because it wasn't groomed that was kind of challenging as well uh, all the way down uh, to the uh, the cutoff and then ended up getting on the community trail met how community trail pretty much um, all the way through I did stop at Brown's farm uh, and thanks for the wonderful people there, uh, the, the Browns. They allowed me to stash some food under their sink, uh, which helped me uh, immensely. It was very important that I had the nourishment. Um, and after, uh, at the end of the video, I'm going to do a little bit of a little segment. I had a couple of people asking about uh, what I did for nourishment and uh, keeping myself hydrated. And I'll go over that at the end of the video. Uh, from there, uh, obviously, I continue in the Meadow Trail. Bob's Bob's Loop was not uh, groomed, so I, and it hadn't been groomed all year, so I didn't even didn't even attempt that. Uh, I obviously did the Meadow Community Trail until we get to Power Plunge, Powers Plunge, and that's the other. Well, okay, so go went up Powers Plunge, and it was nicely groomed, um, and this is where the other struggle. The upper upper winter trail was not groomed, um, and again, it had three inches of powder on it, so it was kind of challenging going up. But managed to managed to work through it. Um, went all the way up, obviously that to um, uh, the cabin cabin trail uh, into the, into the chickadee area. Uh, and then went right by the Chickadee Trailhead. And then on the back side of Pe uh, Beaver Pond, here, all the way up to Sunnyside. Uh, and then I continued on Sunnyside, hit Lower Fox, and then Upper Fox. And then uh, got on Little Wolf all the way until I got to uh, Thompson Road, Thompson Ridge. Uh, from there, I just went completely, it went straight up Thompson Ridge all the way until I got to Meadowlark. And so I took Meadowlark, 
took the loop there, ended up at lower inside passage, came down lower inside passage, uh, ended up again at Thompson Ridge, down to Chickadee Trailhead, and then um, got on Cabin Trail, and then um, obviously the Winthrop Trail from there back down. Uh, my original plan was to go out and do bitter brush, but I uh, kind of ran out of time. Uh, so instead of continuing on, low, on the lower Winthrop Trail, I turned there uh, and went down Power Plunge, um, back up the Community Trail, um, Oh, by the way, I did take a nice break. Um, I take a lunch break at Brown's Farm on the first trip by, and then a nice break at Wolf Ridge. Both of them were saving graces for me. Um, this one I had almost bonked at on the way back. Um, so to continue um, finishing up on the Medhow Trail, I just stayed on the Medhow Trail um, past Mizama and then finished up back to our place. Okay, it's 5.03 and we're gonna give this a try. Unfortunately, right now it looks like uh, Lower Fawn and Sick Joke has not been groomed, which could be a problem. But uh, given the weather conditions, it looks like Today might be the only day I get to do this, so I'm going to attempt it. If it gets too bad, I might have to abort, but I'm gonna give it a shot. Okay, here we go. Start with Strava. Here we go. Sandy Butte. Here we go.
decision. Go ahead. Creek Loop, almost a half or half.
Hello again. Um, uh, after completing that 100 plus mile ski uh, around uh, the Medoc Trail system, I had uh, numerous um, questions about uh, how I was able to keep myself nourished and hydrated through the trip. Um, so the first thing that I did uh, the night, uh, the night before, was I made of about 20 ounces of a uh, concoction that I've come up with. Um, it's uh, water, uh, chia seeds, uh, the electro, this uh, electrolyte uh, concentrate, light balance, uh, just a cap full of that, um, honey, and then a little bit of, um, of the, this true lemon and true lime, uh, crystallized lemon and lime, uh, and a, just a, a standard, uh, standard uh, uh, bottle. Uh, anyhow, so that was, I, I made that the, the night before, put it in the refrigerator, and before, before I headed out, uh, that was my first drink uh, to get me, me hydrated. Um, I did make uh, uh, seven sandwiches. Um, Five of them uh, I ended up leaving or uh, putting at the Browns Farm, uh, staging there. It happened to be the halfway point, uh, which is critical. I had to go by that uh, Browns Farm twice. Um, and it being a halfway point also gave me a lunch break. Uh, but went over to Mizana store and got myself a, a loaf of the, uh, the olive bread over there and then I, that's where I, I made the, the sandwiches and the sandwiches were just uh, turkey uh, and cheese uh, and then also um, I had one of them that was just uh, or two of them that were um, cashews and honey um, those are the so those are the sandwiches I kept a couple of them in my bag uh, and then I like I said I sashed five of them at uh, the uh, Brown's farm uh, and the other thing that I had, I had um, uh, kept with me uh, along the way, I had five granola bars and seven uh, uh, cliff bars. And then one, uh, I did buy a new slicks bar at the Mizama store, and that I also stashed in my, uh, my food that I uh, had at Brown's Farm. Um, along with stashing that, I also stashed three batteries, uh, AA batteries, or AAA batteries, excuse me, for my uh, headlamp, uh, because I was going to, obviously I started in the dark, I started at 5 o'clock, 5.30 in the morning, uh, ended at 8 o'clock, um, so I knew that I needed to have uh, enough uh, light, um, so I stashed myself three, uh, the, the batteries, extra batteries there at Brown's Farm, which I changed. And I also stashed uh, my charger to my phone. Um, obviously I had my phone there for um, uh, uh, safety reasons, uh, but also um, to track myself, track the, the, the course that I did on Strava. Uh, so uh, with me, I carried obviously my uh, Fanny pack uh, with a water bottle. Um, and in that I did a similar concoction that I had in the morning. Um, except uh, I did not use um, the uh, chia seeds. Um, they don't really go real well through the whole of the, uh, it's kind of gets to be a mess. But so the electrolyte, um, honey, obviously uh, needed extra calories. And then, and then a mixture of the, the true lime and true lemon. Uh, it's kind of my own um, Gatorade, if you will. And that was in this one here. Uh, and then um, my Camelback, um, uh, this is where I had uh, one of the sandwiches, uh, two of the sandwiches, and then uh, numerous uh, cliff bars and granola bars, along with having them in here as well. Um, but in the Camelback, strictly water, there was, one, there was 1 1.5 liters uh, of water, and I did consume that um, all the way over the Rendezvous Pass and back. I consumed all of my uh, hydration, uh, and that's one of the reasons I staged to stop at Brown's Farm. 
um, and I refueled or re-watered uh, myself. I uh, was able to, uh, to get that uh, uh, done. Um, I did make a couple uh, of rest stops. Um, I did make a, a, a potty break or a toilet break at um, the uh, Mazama Trailhead there. Uh, and then also uh, one at, um, at uh, Wolf Ridge um, Lodge. So I did take two breaks. Um, the other question I had was uh, when you know when do you know that you need to have fuel or when do you when do you hydrate or uh, when do you feed yourself and for me it's mostly about when my um, my body says I need to eat and uh, as soon as I get this little urge at all I stop immediately uh, and I eat a little more than I would normally think that I needed uh, and then make sure that I uh, took the time to hydrate at the same time. Um, and I was able to, the whole way, uh, be able to, to maintain hydration and enough nourishment um, uh, uh, throughout the trip. Um, other things that were critical, obviously, is I had enough, had enough clothes um, that I, I didn't get too cold or too hot. Um, uh, and also, um, I did... Uh, have a little issue coming down uh, the long route uh, from from Chickadee uh, down to uh, Wolf Ridge. Um, I did get chilled, and I did have to stop there at Wolf Ridge. Thank thank God they had the fire going in there. Um, and I, I what I had realized is that I had almost bonked uh, when I got in there. It was a little delirious, so I had to take about 20 30 minutes in there. Um, I had a, a sandwich, I had a sandwich, the music bar, and um, a cliff bar. Um, gave myself 20 minutes and drank um, as much water as I could get in me. Um, after that, then I uh, cruised home. Um, it wasn't the easiest, uh, obviously, route home. Um, uh, the good thing is on the community trail, they do have markers along the way, um, and so I could see how, how close I was, um, you know, from. Uh, from the trail system, so I did forget to mention what I had um, other than other than my concoction um, for breakfast that morning. Um, I did have uh, a, a good sized bowl of, of oatmeal with uh, with honey. Uh, I had uh, two bananas, uh, uh, two oranges, an apple, uh, and then uh, and then also I had uh, some uh, turkey, uh, just sliced turkey and some cheese. Um, uh, I pretty much tried to eat as much as I, I could before leaving uh, without, you know, making myself sick. Um, that should be it. Thank you.